I don't know what he was trying to do. It was like he was going to sit on a toilet, but there was a snake on the toilet. But for some reason, somebody had a gun to his head and was like, you better sit on that toilet. Time of the Body here. Thank you very much for joining me as always. And let's face it, you're in one of two phases right now. Either you're trying to put on muscle or you're trying to get ripped. Today, we are going to focus on the former because so many people are trying to become into jacked up goons, but they're not able to do it. And nine times out of 10, it's because you're ignoring the really simple stuff. So that's right, there's no mucking around. Here's seven reasons why your muscles ain't growing. Number seven, adding muscle is hard. People do not talk about this enough. I am not mucking around here. Now, of course, there are a bunch of things that you do need to do in order to stimulate protein synthesis and muscle synthesis, and we're going to talk about them. But you always have to have it in the back of your head. It's the most important thing before you get into the fuddy-duddy stuff, that it's not an easy thing to do. You don't just go to the gym and go, blah, 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 and then come back and eat some protein. That's not enough. You have to be intense. You have to push it, and you have to put in the work. You, start, you can't start going to the gym on a Monday and by the Sunday be like, why don't I look like Arnold Schwarzenegger? This is not a Craig David song. <laughs> Monday, also in that Craig David song, all he did was go around and have sex with some woman. So actually he was doing cardio. So we need to push it to one side. But it's like, I'm trying to think of an equivalent, like trying to learn piano, for example. Unless you're some kind of savant or in this space, you have really good genetics. You can't just sit down at a piano and all of a sudden be like, dun, 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 and turn into Elton John. You have to work at it and you have to give it time and you have to come up with different methods in order to keep progressing. And it is the same with going to the gym. If you're not putting in the work, it's very unlikely you are going to get the results out of it. But this is a good thing to know. It means when you are about to lift weights or train or whatever the hell you may be doing, you can get in that headspace where you're like, man, I've got to put it in. You know, I've got to put that intensity in in order for me to get the stuff I want out of it. It doesn't mean it's going to just be easy now because we've talked about this. But I really do think other videos and other fitness influencers, if that's the term we're going to use, should focus on this more. Because then even before you start your journey, it's like going up Mount Everest. No one gets to the bottom of Mount Everest and goes, well, this is going to be a piece of piss because it's not. And number six is you're not training your muscles enough. Now I'm saying enough because I don't know what's going to work for you. If you've been a long time watcher of my channel, you know I think twice a week is the way to do it. This means you train arm twice a week, you train shoulders twice a week, you train your back twice a week, you train your legs twice a week, your chest, blah, and so on and so forth. You can do a push pull legs day, you can do whatever the hell you want, but maybe that's not enough for you. Some people, and it's becoming more and more popular in 2022, like to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and they do Monday overall body, Wednesday overall body, Friday overall body, and they rest on that Tuesday, they rest on that Thursday, and they rest on that weekend, and for one reason or another, they think they are recovering enough so they can get away with it. So I suppose you have to go to the other side of the coin with this. Do I think once a week is enough? I'm going to go with probably not. I'm never going to say 100% not, because again, I don't know you, although it's a pleasure to meet your acquaintance. But I guess the ideal way to spin this is if you're trying to put on muscle and you're not able to do it right now, and you are doing, you know, back and buys, chest and tries, shoulders, legs, rest, start again, then probably if you introduce a second session for all of those muscle groups is when finally you're going to get over that hump that you are on. Because I mean, we'll do the maths just because the maths is the easiest way to put it. If you do chest once a week, that's 52 times a year. And if you double it, that's 104 times. I mean, you can't argue with that. Maths is math. Number five is you're doing too much cardio. Now, I want to caveat this by saying cardio is the most important thing you can do, really, because it works your heart, keeps your heart healthy, and there's nothing more important than that. Again, we've said it before, and that's the most important muscle in the entirety of the human body. However, there has to be a limit to the amount of cardio that you're doing. And a few messages that I've got recently is that people don't want to stop their cardio, but they do feel like it's becoming a hindrance, and it's just because they're doing too much. These are people that are getting up and they're doing an hour of fasted cardio, then they're going to the gym and sometimes before their weights, they're trying to get more cardio in, and then they're even doing some when they get to the evening. And throughout all of that, they're also trying to get in their 10,000 steps. You do not need that much cardio. In my humble opinion, well, I think the you know statisticians or whatever that come up with this stuff say 120 minutes a week is fine. So what's that? 3, 6, 9, 12. So that would be four 30-minute sessions would be enough. You can get that in within a week, right? It's, it's say you are doing, even if you're doing push-pull legs, rest push-pull legs, you have those two separate days where you're doing nothing, where you get 30 minutes in and 30 minutes in, and then you're halfway there. It's what Bon Jovi was singing about. If you're doing an hour of cardio every single day, you do not need to get more cardio in because if you do do that, the reason why you're probably not seeing muscle growth is not because cardio steals your gains away, it's because you're knackered. <laughs> It's because you're exhausted and you're probably not eating enough to both 
you know, push forward, you're trying to, you know, put on muscle or maintain muscle while also trying to lose fat. Now, obviously, I always think you should pick one, but some people like to do it this way and then they control it with their calories, but there has to be a limit to it. And do not forget, if you are trying to burn fat, we're going off a little bit of a tangent here. If you are trying to burn fat and you're already doing one hour of cardio every single day, I don't think you need to go up for two hours. What I would do is reduce your calories, right? You've done the cardio thing. You throw everything at cardio and that's great. You're going to be feeling awesome in terms of your cardiovascular health. But when it actually comes to the aesthetic side, you're going to have to go into your calories. And I know you're thinking to yourself, oh, but I'd rather increase my cardio than decrease my food. Yes, but there has to be a tipping point otherwise well you just get lost in the fog and you want to know what happens when you get lost in the fog you can't find your way home number four is that you're not sticking to specific rep ranges i don't want to hear anything about this oh man well i you know i lift low rep ranges in order to get big and then i do high rep ranges in order to get uh, ripped that's not a thing right it's absolute nonsense we're not doing it anymore but what you have to remember is you you can't you can't keep jumping around with this stuff i don't mind if you want to change it but so many people are still falling into this. Well, I need to have a big bicep, for example. So I'm only going to do five to six reps on the bicep curl. And it's going to work for a little while. But I do not think that's enough time and attention, especially for something like a bicep, which is a relatively small muscle group. I think you'd be much better off doubling that and going 12 to 15 reps and ensuring in that 13, 14, 15 reps, you want to rip your head off because the lactic acid buildup in your bicep is so bad. You think, why am I doing this? It is not worth it. But I mean, you can jump around throughout a week, but I, just, I think my point I'm trying to make is I don't see how you're going to be able to do progressive overload. Unless what you're doing is you're doing the twice a week muscle thing that we've already talked about. Let's take legs, doing legs on a Monday, legs on a Friday. If on Monday leg day, you are doing that 12 to 15 rep range in the exercises you choose to do, and then you get to Friday and you treat that as a strong day, that will probably work. But if on Monday you're doing the, the higher rep range, then you get to Friday and you do the low rep range, then you get to Monday, you do the low rep range again, then you get to Friday, you stick with the low rep range. It's there's no consistency there. So when you are making all your notes and you sit down going, why isn't this working? Why isn't that working? Well, it's just an amalgamation of information, which is my new EP coming out next week. There's nothing you can do with that. And consistency and sometimes just doing the same thing over and over again is the way that you can build muscle. And then again, when you get 6, 8, 12, 16, 20 weeks down the line, you can look back and say what's working and what's not working. But do not ignore the higher rep ranges. We're not living in this world. Unless you're a strong man, we're not living in this world where you have to hit four, five, you know, six reps in order to grow. You can do it and take it slow and focus on that next negative and remember that you know every single repetition you do is working that muscle so if you do get past that 10 rep range and you're still going that's when your brain kicks in that's when your body kicks in ties into number seven that we've already talked about when all of a sudden you're like you know grow grow and your body knows you want to grow because you've got this bar and you're literally doing this as you try and curl it up to your chin now it's bizarre and it's a strange thing to do but it's got us now, so we may as well roll with it. Which ties directly into number three, your range of motion sucks. Because it just does. It's one of the reasons I made this video. One of the reasons why I just started talking about the bicep curl. This is not a bicep curl. I've just moved house. I don't have any of my tools. But let's say we start here, which you would never do. Say that's the full rep range, right? Which it's not. Don't come at me in the comments. If you're doing this, <laughs> that's ridiculous. It's fine if you've already got your reps in and you're just trying to get a few more out to finish yourself off. Terrible thing to say, but you know what I'm getting at. But if you are not doing proper range of motion and proper form, you are going to hit a plateau sooner than people that are. I saw someone doing squats the other day and I would never go up to anybody because who am I? I don't have any authority over anybody in the gym and ultimately you can do whatever you want and good for you for even being there. But he couldn't have been, like, <laughs> he couldn't have been moving his knees more than like three centimeters. I don't know what he was trying to do. It was like he was going to sit on a toilet, but there was a snake on the toilet. But for some reason, somebody had a gun to his head and was like, you better sit on that toilet. And he was going, well, if I sit down, the snake will probably bite me and I have a poisonous death. Whereas if I don't, I get shot in the head. And they're contemplating, it's a weird tangent, they're contemplating which is a better demise for me as a human being. You have to have a good range of motion when you start off that first rep, second rep, third rep, fifth, eighth, ninth, tenth, all of those. They have to be good. You wouldn't do this in any other walk of life. You just wouldn't. There's nothing else you do. When you're going to eat some food, you don't like do some normal uh, scoops with a spoon or a fork. And then the last two, just try and flick them into your mouth. And you've got peas and mashed potato smacking into your head and go, well, why can't I eat as successfully as I was once doing? Because your manner of... Uh, apparatus, the way you're using it is completely wrong. So remember that weightlifting is so simple. It really is when you break it right down. The gains aren't and the, and the sort of putting that mass on you isn't, but the actual structure of it is. So just lift sensibly. <laughs> That's going to be far better than 
than doing this. What are you, a jackhammer? And number two is nice and simple. You're worried about your abs. And I get it. As soon as you've got a six pack, you never want to get rid of it. And you realize in order to put that mass back on, you're going to have to increase your calories. You're going to have to eat in a surplus. And your abs are going to be a little bit less, a little bit less, a little bit less. Don't forget you can main gain though, where you still maintain most of your abdominal wall while still putting on muscle. But sometimes you just have to hold your hands up in the air and go, I'm not the type of guy that is able to do this, which is perfectly cool. It makes it more fun. Having abs can be the indicator to your brain that you are heading in the right direction with your diet and with your training program because you see them coming back. So always remember, just decide what your main goal is. If you're trying to put on muscle, you just got to sacrifice the abs. It's the same as anything. Well, that word sacrifice is the most used thing in 2022. You want to do anything that is deemed a passion project. Most people say, oh, there's going to be a lot of sacrifice. And you already know about sacrifice because if you, all your mates and your family go out for dinner and you're on your strict plan, you'll go out, but you'll have a salad. You know, you won't uh, indulge. You'll leave that to your cheat meal. And it's just the same with this. You've got to say goodbye to your abs for a little bit, but they'll come back again. It's like a wonderful friend you see once a year. Also, you don't want to see that friend more than once a year because eventually they're going to drive you crazy. And then number one, you ain't prioritizing protein because you need protein in order for your muscles to grow. Once again, we're keeping it nice and simple here. For some reason, protein has been thrown in there with like, this is how it's gone. We're back in the 80s, early 90s. Everyone was like, carbs, carbs, you can't eat carbs. Then it shifted over to, oh my gosh, fat, fat is fat and it will make you fat. And then as of late, it's been like, oh man, people are having too much protein. That's turning into fat, right, right, right. Now, of course, that is going to happen. But it's now, it's scaring people off. Like the carbohydrate had to go full circle before people realized, oh my gosh, it's an energy source and it's amazing and it tastes delicious. And now people understand, well, I eat a bit more carbs here and a little less carbs here. It's the same with protein. You just have to figure out what works for you, but you have to get a enhancement of it. Not the right word of dodgy at all, but you have to get an enhancement of it, an increase of it into your diet. That doesn't mean that you eat 300, 400 grams a day for only a 150 pound guy. Yeah, again, people are now saying, oh no, you don't need that much protein. Well, you know, you still need more protein than you probably think you do. It doesn't have to be too extreme here. It doesn't have to be, oh my gosh, I'm really having one can of tuna a day to oh, I'm having 37 chicken breasts. Find somewhere in the middle. But if you are not growing and you are really not seeing progression of muscles, sit down, write down everything you're eating and figure out the macronutrients, especially the protein. Then just try and do some maths using anecdotal information from me, from things you can find online. And eventually you'll come up with a magic number, which will probably be three, but we'll talk about that on a different video. But only then can you go, oh, I can see I'm not getting enough protein in here. I'm not getting enough protein in there. This is not me saying that all of a sudden you take your 30 gram protein shake and you double it to 60 grams. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying make sure you are taking in enough. And if you are, hopefully there's something else that we've talked about today that will help. But ultimately, in my limited experience, as long as you're being super duper intense, you will be making strides forward. And don't forget that eventually you are going to hit your genetic limit. That is a thing and age is going to come and it's going to kick your ass too. I mean, when you're past 45, not that I'm there yet and won't be there for some time. But once again, you do some reading. Once you pass 45, you may as well go eat pizza. Not true. Keep up the training. Eat pizza as well because it's lovely. Thank you very much. Now, please do leave a comment below and let me know what you think about all of this. Like the video, share the video and subscribe. Also, there'll be a bell on the screen, a notification bell. Give it a click and see what happens. It may be great. There'll also be another video on the screen. If you could click that too, and I massively appreciate it. You don't even have to watch it. You just have to let it roll. Also, grillofmind.com for says Simon's good Simon to get 10% off. They have done a massive restock recently. So if something has been out of stock should be back in now and if you go to simon to get 10 percent off anything they do have on the store at simon 316 on instagram and twitter uh, patreon.com for the simon 316 if you want more videos or just to support me that way it's appreciated i also have a cameo if you want a shout out but what i want more than anything is for you to go to the gym today and i want you to kick all the ass possible you come home you lay down and you feel great goodbye